Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Finn and today, as you can see, we are going plowing. It's time to try and get a few crops in. So we're going to be plowing our maize and our beet ground. The fields behind us at home. Uh, bro is spreading dung there away like a madman. I give him the option, do you want to plow or spread dung? He said he'd spread dung in the 7618, so just set him up at that there. So I'm going to do the plowing, but before I start plowing, I have to turn the points as my points badly want to be turned. They didn't get turned when we sort of done the beans, so they definitely got the, all there was to be got out that side. So just go drive over to the workshop, turn the points, fill it with diesel, and then we go turn some ground. So this is one field, this field is going into maize, 12 acres here, rows flat out putting the dung out. We put slurry on this yesterday with the pipes, insert drone footage there of putting out pipes, filling dung and all that sweet stuff.
evening and tonight. So Rose put out the dung on this field. So we're starting up here on where we're putting our beet. And we have, we thought we'd six acres up here, but it turns out we just have over four acres after mapping it while spreading it. So we're gonna have to put in a few acres of beet somewhere else. So Father Phil thinks he knows where he'll do that. But we've done the same here. This is its dung and everything we got. So I actually think, yeah, the furrow is this side. So we start this side of the hedge now. So we don't have too far to go at all. And we are starting to plow. So yeah, busy, busy, busy. But hopefully now everything is set up on this. So I'll change top links. So we might have to make a few adjustments there, but we might be too bad after that. So away we go. Yeah. And away we go. Board. And this was my outfit. This was 6290, this 6290, and this plow is why I used the plow. And he always went first. You always made sure he was first. Because if it was the other way around, if you blocked with his stone in a furrow, he'd spend more time looking behind him than he would in front. So if you were in front of him, you always had to <laughs> nearly lift the plow and go go out with this water hall together just in case he, he never happened but he'd always be watching out for him and he'd go like the clappers before I went to college that one was bull trot you just hand trot and shoved it all the way and that was it it was flat out to the mat so until I went to college then I learned that max torque in a tractor is 17, 18, 1900 rpm so you don't need to rev it beyond that and when we come back and we're pounding away then with him because I dropped back in throttle because you don't need it I used to have to go up into B to be able to keep up with him because he'd go like the clappers across the field and only for his plow that the reason we don't use the four for a slack board is it's an awfully slow plow to turn only for that plow is so, so slow to turn, it gave me enough time to get, catch up with him, get out of the furrow and he'd just be about turned ready to go back in when I'd be just flipping myself around turn and go. That's why I always plow with this one because it's a much faster plow to turn, much faster to plow with it. But many's a day and many's an hour was spent chasing after him up and down the field with the plow. That was one of his jobs. He loved the tillage. He loved the half bowing and harrowing and all that. that was, they were his jobs. It is. We keep turning the sods for him. And it is the next day. We are bowing away here. We've just fit. We finished our beet ground up there and we've started on our maize ground. Father Phil is putting out dung. He's nearly there. 7618 looks very well on the dung spreader, so it looks very well. So we're plowing here, we're just trying to straighten it out. So, so the field is like a banana, it goes like that. So just trying to straighten out these runs to try and match up with the other one. 
and hopefully that works out all too not too bad not going that well um, just not feeling that far but we are on a bit of a gradient and it really kind of struggles when you're turning up the hill and if you're wondering why didn't I start at the bottom because last year I started at the bottom and every year you have to alternate so you start the bottom last year you start the top this year and then next year I'll start the bottom and I'm starting to slide down the hill yeah it's not the steepest bit of a hill but it's enough just to leave life difficult so we'll try and get this straightened up and um, but yeah we're plowing away we had gold crop out earlier today well just literally all who has sorting out our seed for this year our maize and our beet and our multi-species sward and sunflower seed we're going to try a few sunflowers and pumpkin seed and just a couple of different things with them so it's gearing up now to start getting all these crops in so I'll put down this camera and it's just still sliding downhill. Still sliding downhill. Yeah. I concentrate on what I'm doing now because she just does not want to stay traveling up the hill. So tipping away here nicely, slowly but surely getting down the field, and the gulls have landed. They have landed to pick the worms. By a lot of them. Get to the other end of the field and go get me dinner. And the birds are having, the gulls are having their dinner now. As we get down the hill, start to plow a bit better. Just not going, turning up the hill that well. She's leaving ridges all over the place. The 618 looks well on the dung spreader. Father Phil has just finished spreading the last of the dung. So I need to go off to get that looked at. And what was it? Five minutes with the doctor, 60 euro later. Oh, it's an insect bite. Probably got a bacteria infection after all. It's like, hopefully, be out here by to dark moved on to the next one. I think Father Phil's going off spraying now. He's spraying off our multi-species sward area that we're going to get that done. Just a bit to be sprayed off for some other lads for receding. And he used to go spray docks for someone. So he's a good bit of spraying on. Wind is just a bit of an issue. But I think it's calmed down enough. He should get spray, spray, ugh, spraying. So that he can get that done. And be getting another bit ready. And I keep this plow in the ground. Keep her moving. You can see the drying in an hour and a bit. I was away. Just plowed. Oh, super drying out at the minute now. That end of the field is quite wet. Or when I say wet, it's sticky. So given a plow, given a couple of days drying before we harrow it, should do a good job of it. But you can see here all our grill array is starting to regrow. No, it's not all of the crop, but there is a certain amount of it that's starting to regrow there. We could have probably grazed it before running just there, swaths or 40 in the bottoms there, run them up here and run them across at happy days. But we took down all our fences and I wasn't going to start pulling back up fences just for the sake of grazing, nibbling them bits off again. So we'll plow it down. And because the maze is going in here, it's going to get a pre-emergent spray. And I can just knock that for six straight away. Well, oh, um, yeah. Not going too bad there, now we're off the bit of a hill.
now we're on short ground and headlands so yeah don't mind the plowing uphill it doesn't it's not the steepest bit of ground but plowing up the hill bloody hard hard to keep the tractor in line but just driving under that branch to plow me a bit and uh, my beak can come off so hopefully it isn't broken no yeah. Just stick it back on. Don't drive over it, under it again. God, I love the purr off that Perkins. within an hour or two of being finished plowing is bloody slow but it needs to be done because this field is in far drip or the two the two bits we plowed in this video are in far drip the compaction of the cattle over the winter grazing if we've seen it before where we have ground similar to that and we just mini tilled it and we had a very poor crop after it just due to the compaction because of how heavy the ground is around here if you don't open it up and air it up it's after compaction it's just the water will just sit on it and it's it crop struggle so plus we have to plow it so anyways we're going to move on to the next bit of short ground and the next headland so bro just after bro took over from me to keep the plow going while I um, had my tea so we're on, we're on the final hurdle. So that there and the headland that side, that's it. So hopefully half an hour ish we should be done. And that is all she wrote. That is the field plowed, all the headlands, she's all plowed. Plow is definitely good and bright now. Oh, oh yeah, that is a slow job. You always kind of forget how slow plowing is until that time of year comes round again here. Oh jeez, this is slow. It's a slow job. Have we the five fur going? No. We have the legs sorted, but just haven't had time to run over to the workshop and strip it down. Will I get done? Probably not before we've everything sewn because it's just full tilt now to get everything in. It is getting on, but last year I didn't don't think we sewed the last until the fifth of May and it was perfectly fine it was actually huge crop of stuff so well I'll keep pushing that and get more plowing done more dung spread start getting the crops in get all in now hopefully get a lot of stuff in next week but that's that's kind of where we're at now the wet march just definitely left us late and you can even see like the ground this end of the field you wouldn't run in with a one pass there now and you wouldn't really with stones anyways but you wouldn't I wouldn't be in any rush to go tilling that just yet. A top field, yeah, but not this bit. It's still still quite soft. You, you just mucking. Mucking is all you'd be at trying to get it in now. It's going to take two or three days to dry out another bit, but that's where we're at. Starting to make a bit of progress, but anyways, look up. Was there much more to say? If any comments, anything like that, as always, hit me in the comments down below. And as always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. That's it for me. Good luck.